Okay, and so a brand new version of DaVinci Resolve, version 17.4 has just recently come out and I finally updated it. And with it comes a lot of new features, but at least for me, there's gonna be three main features that I'm looking forward to being somebody who is more of a general user of DaVinci Resolve and definitely not an expert by any means. But also I'm gonna talk about a bonus feature as well. So let's go ahead and check out the top three features and a bonus feature of DaVinci Resolve 17.4. Welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. On this channel, you'll learn how to be creative and I'll teach you the tools you need to create. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel create more content like this. All right, and so DaVinci Resolve 17.4, as usual, has a ton of new features. Everything from really basic upgrades to a lot more advanced features that a lot of people who are experts in using DaVinci Resolve would definitely appreciate. But at least for me, I am not an expert in DaVinci Resolve. I'm more of a general user beginner. And so the features that I'm gonna be talking about today are gonna to be really tailored towards the things that I think are gonna be helpful for people like myself. And so I'm gonna be talking about my top three features and also a bonus feature. Now, before I get into this video, I will say that I am using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. And so some of these features, or I would say a lot of the best features are only available in the paid studio version. And so if you are using the free version, then some of these features that DaVinci Resolve 17.4 has might not be available for that particular version. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start off with my first best feature of DaVinci Resolve 17.4. And the key update here is actually to the subtitles feature. So let's go here to titles and we have our subtitles right here. I'm gonna drag it here and we'll go ahead and select it and I'm gonna extend it. And we're here in our subtitles. Now, here are some of the key improvements that I've seen with the subtitle feature. Uh, the first thing is whenever you type in your subtitle, and you have a background. So let's go here to style. We'll turn on our background. So that way it's easier to see. And if you type it in, whatever it is, it will actually adjust the size of this background for you, which is really awesome. And so if you actually had uh, more text right here, it'll just keep increasing it and resize it accordingly, which is awesome or even if you actually increase the size of the text, it will adjust it here as well. This makes things a lot easier. And at least for me, for people who are gonna be using subtitles, especially if they have an international audience, this is really gonna save them a ton of time. Now, there are some other features within the subtitle text that they have improved, but these are the main things that I noticed and one that I feel is very useful for a lot of creators. And so the number two feature that I think it will be really useful for a lot of creators is the ability to actually preview your composite. And so if you actually select your clip, you go up here to video and go down here to composite. Before, if you wanted to see what your composite might look like, you would actually have to choose it first. But now DaVinci Resolve allows you to simply preview it by putting your mouse over it and then you could see how the composite will look like. So this is a very subtle, but very time saving feature because in this case, I don't have to like guess what it is and I don't have to go ahead and click on it. I simply just highlight it and it is show me a preview. So another basic update, but one that will save creators a lot of time. So that is my number two best feature in 17.4. All right, and so my number one best feature in DaVinci Resolve 17.4 is pretty obvious because it has to do with green screens and that is updates to the 3D keyer. Now, after this number one feature, don't forget that I will be going over my bonus feature, which is one that I don't use very often, but it's one that I think will be useful to some creators. And so let's go ahead and get to the 3D keyer updates. So we go here to open effects and then we come down here to resolve FX key, there's this thing called 3D keyer. So I'm gonna drag it here on top of my clip and we'll see it under effects. Now the thing is, I actually still have 
options for my the previous 3D Cure, which is the legacy version. And so I'm going to be showing you the differences between the two. So I'm going to be going back and forth between the old version and the new version. And so this is the previous legacy version. I think it was a great addition in DaVinci Resolve 17. But there's definitely some improvements that can be made. And that's what Blackmagic did. So if you go to the new version, you're going to notice some differences. The first thing is there is this delete stroke feature. And I'm going to go over how that works. And then under behavior options, there's also more features available here. There's options for soft, flat, tight, luma. And also you can adjust the despill as well. Whereas in the older version, you couldn't do that. And for despill, you could only check or uncheck that. And then the final major change here is that they've added more options down here. So before you just had the matte finesse, garbage matte, and output. But now you also have this thing called key adjustments, which gives you even more fine tuning. So these are options that are very welcome and they do really speed up the time that you have to spend on your 3D care. And I think most importantly, it makes things a lot easier for people to do chroma key without having to go to something like Fusion or the color tab, which is always very welcome to somebody who is a general user like myself. So now let's take a look at some of the other characteristics of the new 3D Cure, which you won't be able to see unless you actually use it. So if we go back to the old legacy version, if I wanted to use this, the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the open effects overlay. And then I'm going to go here to my picker and I'm going to go ahead and pick where I want the 3D key to go on. And at the same time, if I wanted to see the paths that I drew, I'll go here to show paths. And also if I wanted to see how the green screen looks like in terms of like what's left in terms of, uh, I would say more accurate view, you could actually change your output on your composite to alpha highlight black and white. So this is going to give you a lot more accurate view of the green screen uh, that's actually remaining. And so in this case, all the areas that's white, is what's going to show up. And so here we still have some left on this side. So you can be able to see this a lot easier uh, versus not having it in this whole alpha highlight black and white mode. And then you could always go back to final composite. And then you could also turn off your show paths as well. So that's how in general it would work with the old version of the 3D Cure. Now on a new version, they've actually streamlined a lot of different things. And so let's go ahead and use the selector and a pick and we'll go ahead and use it. So you'll notice something right away. It actually goes to the alpha black and white without you having to go down here and change your compositing, which is really, really awesome. So anytime you use this, you'll be able to see how your key is going to look. And at the same time, you know, you can actually apply your D spill here and make your adjustments. This is such a really thoughtful feature because it just makes things a lot easier. And if you notice, I actually went overboard on it. And here's where the new feature of delete stroke comes in. So in this case, the venture job remembers all the various strokes or paths that you use. And so you could actually go back to whatever stroke that you wanted. So in this case, I want to remove this one. And so, or maybe go here and delete that one. So it gives you a lot more fine tuned controlling as you can see here, which is awesome, but you still have the option to actually reset everything as well. But giving you this ability once again, allows you more control. And here are the other behavior options. You could change it to soft, flat, tight, and Luma. And then you could also play around with the brand new key adjustments. So all of these things, really gives you a lot more granular control while at the same time keeping things way way simpler versus using something like fusion or the color tab which definitely is still available for you and allows you to do way more advanced chroma keying if you need it but i think for the vast majority of people having the 3d cure and having these updates it's going to make a huge difference and it's probably going to allow people to be more creative because now they could do like more advanced things without having to learn how to do advanced stuff. <laughs> and so that is my number one best feature in DaVinci Resolve 17.4. And all these top three features that I talk about here, 
these are things that I think the vast majority of people, whether they are general users or even advanced users, will use more often. And it's one that I think a lot of people like myself do appreciate because it allows us to work a lot faster, but at the same time, give us a lot more flexibility in a very complex tool. And so that's always something that I applaud Blackmagic for doing, making things more accessible to a very powerful video editor. So now that we have our top three best features, let's go ahead and look at the bonus feature within DaVinci Resolve 17.4. If you love reading books, then check out Audible, which has the largest selection of audiobooks anywhere on the internet. Sign up today and get a 30-day free trial. For more information, check out the affiliate link in the description area below. And so the bonus feature in DaVinci Resolve 17.4 is one that I think a lot of YouTube creators will appreciate if they upload directly from DaVinci Resolve. Now, since this is a feature that I don't really use, I didn't put it in my top features. That's why it's a bonus feature. But if you do upload directly from DaVinci Resolve a lot, then I could easily see this being one of the top features. And that update has to do with allowing you to create chapters in DaVinci Resolve and then uploading those chapters directly to YouTube. So basically, you're able to create YouTube chapters right here in DaVinci Resolve. So let me show you how this works. So the first thing you want to do, as with any YouTube chapters, is you always have to add a chapter at the beginning. So once you brought your playhead here at the beginning, you'll go ahead and add a marker. So you could choose whatever color you want. I'm just going to choose the default blue. There's, you could also use this right here as well. And then once you have your marker, you can name it. So I'm going to name this intro. And I'm going to add some other markers as well. So I'm going to add one here. Add a marker here. I'm going to name it. And then I'm going to add one more marker right there. Let's just say final clip. All right. So let's just assume that these are all the YouTube chapters that you want and you're ready to upload directly to YouTube. So you go here to your deliver tab and then go here to YouTube. And then if you choose this option, upload directly to YouTube, and you're gonna see this brand new option called chapters from markers. So you could check that. And what's really cool is since you're able to add multiple markers with different colors, you could choose which ones that you wanna add as a YouTube chapter because in some cases, you will be using markers for many different things. And so I'm really happy that DaVinci Resolve gave you that option. Now, if you're wondering where you could set your upload to YouTube settings, so all you have to do is go here to DaVinci Resolve and then go to Preferences. And then here under Internet Accounts, you could sign in to YouTube. So that way, DaVinci Resolve will actually remember your credentials when you're uploading to YouTube. So that is it for my top three features and my bonus feature of DaVinci Resolve 17.4. If you actually had any of your own features that you really enjoyed with this new version or any other thoughts on this, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials and tips, I do have an entire playlist. I'll leave that in the description area as well. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you're a creative geek like me and you want to get exclusive access to more content that I don't put out here publicly on my YouTube channel, then join my Goal Content Creators Group, where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part is all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Goal Content Creators Group.